Hi, and welcome to Swedish Plant Guys. A big question to everyone that owns a plant is repot or not to repot? That is the big question here today. And in this video, we will tell you why do we repot, when should you repot, and how do we repot? Now, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do and hit the bell as well so you get a notification every time we put up something new. If you like this video, please, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps our channel a lot. And please follow us and like us on Facebook and Instagram where you can get sneak previews on upcoming videos and sometimes just a little bit more. And of course, please share with your friends as well. Now, first off, why do we repot our plants? Well, there are a lot of different reasons. But we need to start by saying that when you buy a new plant, we do not recommend you to repot that immediately. Usually not. And the reason for this is that when you buy a new plant and you get it to your house, there is a big change for that plant. It changes locations with new light, new humidity, new placement, new water. It can be a lot of things at the same time. So we should not go in and repot immediately because that also can stress the plant. So our recommendation is that usually let the plant settle in your house for at least six months up to 12 months before you do that first initial repot. But if you have a plant, when you get it home and you see that, well, the roots are just massive. You can notice that you, you cannot even water your plant because the water doesn't go down into the soil. It just stays on top of the soil. You have that, that massive root system. Well, then in that case, maybe you need to repot it immediately. But otherwise, just let it settle in a little bit for, before. Second thing is, of course, aesthetics. If you get your plant in this type of an inner pot, in a terracotta look like this, well, maybe you don't want that in your house. Maybe you want it in another type of pot. Then, of course, you have to repot it. Um, but the easiest way is just to use an outer pot that covers up this inner pot. And we actually recommend you to use these inner types of pots that has that drainage hole in the bottom. Now we have a video uh, on good drainage. So go and check that out to see what you need to be doing with your soil and with your pots to get that good drainage. But we recommend you to have this and then have an outer pot that covers up that inner pot. But why do we repot then? Well, the most common thing is that we want to give our roots more room to grow. And when we do that, that usually means that the plant feels good and it starts to grow even more. So that is another thing. But so when you see that you have roots coming out of the pot, for instance, then it, that can be a trigger to say that, okay, it's time to repot because it needs more room. We also need to repot if you have loss of percolation. Now, what does that mean? Well, when you try and add water to your pot here, to your plant, and the water doesn't go down into that soil, it actually stays on top of the soil for a long period of time before it slowly goes down. Then you have what we call loss of percolation. That is also a trigger for you to know that, okay, it's time to repot because what it means that you have a massive root system that the water cannot even get down into your system. That is a problem. So then you need to repot your plant. On the other hand, you can also see that when you water your plant, the water goes straight through. You can just see that it goes out of the bottom of the pot. You can feel the soil and it doesn't really get to be wet or moist. What has happened is that your soil has lost its ability to retain water. 
And this usually happens over a long period of time, that when the soil breaks down, it cannot hold that much water anymore. That is also a trigger for you to, okay, it's time to repot. So what I'm saying is that over a long period of time, the soil will start to break down. So you might not have to repot in a bigger pot and give it more room to grow. You just might have to exchange that soil that you have in your pot because it's breaking down. It's not functioning as well anymore. So moving on from why do we repot to when do we repot? Well, a general rule of thumb is that you should repot your indoor tropical plants every two years, approximately. If you haven't seen any of those problems we said before, that you have loss of percolation or too much water is going through, you have, if you don't have any problems, then a recommendation is that every two years you need to repot. You don't have to repot it bigger, you just have to exchange that soil because it needs to be changed. It's breaking down. Now, when is the best time to do this? Well, there is a general rule, and that is that the best time to repot is that when your plant is active. And the plant is active two times a year. It's active in spring, when it gets more light, higher humidity, it just wants to start to grow. So just before that time, when it wants before spring or the start early spring, then it's a perfect time to repot your plant because it's getting ready. And if you give it that nice new soil, those added nutrients, it will just explode even more and give you even more growth. Another period is also in autumn when it's starting to take all those sugars and starches that it has been producing over the active period and it's starting to push that down into new root growth. It starts to prepare for the winter time. That is also a good time to repot, to just give it more nutrients in that soil, give it a better preparation for winter. When we do not repot, is during the dormant periods and most plants have two dormant periods we have a video that tells you everything you need to know about dormancy we'll put a link to that up there but just in short those periods are in the winter time it goes dormant then we should not touch the plant too much let it be and also in the high time of summer when it is the most heat the most moisture in the air the plant also goes dormant because in these two periods of time a lot of the energy actually just goes to maintain the plant's normal function it is stressed in winter time it is stressed in the middle of summer because of that heat as well it's just transporting water and nutrients and trying to do that so if you go in and repot it stress it even more it could fail on you so we repot the best times to do this is when the plant is active with that said there are of course plants that are active almost all times of, of the year and those plants can actually be repotted at any time but the recommendations are still there because even if you have a plant that grows a little bit all year round it will grow more in spring it will help the roots even more in autumn. So spring and autumn is still the best time of year, but you can do it any time of year with those type of plants. If you watch our videos frequently, you know what I'm going to say now. And that is, we never do anything with our plants unless it's feeling well. And that general advice applies here as well. If your plant is not feeling well, if you have pests on it, it looks droopy, yeah, you can see that it's just not feeling well, don't go in and repot it initially. Try and find out why it's feeling bad. When you found out the reason, take care of that reason, and then you could repot. It could be that repotting is actually a thing to do to make it feel well. 
but the general idea is that we repot when the plant is feeling well. Now the last time is of course when we don't have any options. One thing could be that you have overwatered your plant. You need to do something drastically to remove that. We have a video that shows you how to take care of an overwatered plant. We'll put that in the li link up here uh, so you can do something immediately to it. But it could also mean that, that all of that water has given you root rot. When you pull up that plant you see and you can smell that something is wrong. You have that distinct smell of root rot. You can see on the roots that they start to get black and soggy. Then you have to repot. You cut off those, um, those uh, uh, roots that are, are infected and you repot your plant and you make sure that it dries out a lot before you start to water it again. So one way of repotting can be that we are forced to repot. Then of course we have to do it. So how do we repot? Well there are a couple of things to consider when we, we are repotting. First of all, what do we need? Well, we need a plant that needs to be repotted. Now I have a Schefflera arboricola here and uh, this has a massive root system as you can see and uh, we actually have loss of percolation in this here. When we water this, uh, the water doesn't want to go into the pot uh, because there's too much uh, roots. So we have a plant. We have a new pot that we're going to repot this in uh, and we have soil. Now for this plant I'm using a soil that is a mixture of around 70% of normal potting soil and 30% of pumice. Now if you frequently watch our videos you know that we use pumice for almost everything. We usually just repot in almost pure pumice but for this video I'm actually using a soil mix of 70% of normal planting soil and 30% of pumice. That will be perfect for the Schefflera. Uh, now first of all what I want you to do when you're repotting is that make sure to water your plant one or two days before repotting, repotting because you're actually helping the roots if they are a little bit moist when you start to repot. If it is extremely dry what can happen when you expose those roots to the air uh, is that you can stress the plant. So water it one or two days before repotting. Now Otherwise you just start by removing the old pot from your plant here. Uh, now I know that this is coming off quite easily but if you m see that it's hard to get, it, it has become a little bit root bound, uh, it's actually hanging on to the pot, uh, then what you can do if it is a small plant like this one, you can actually just make some pressure around the pot here and that will make the roots start to loosen from the pot. Um, if it is a bigger pot you can actually put it down on the floor and just press it with, your both, with both your hands around the pot and you will have the same thing. Now if it still doesn't want to come out of its pot what you can do is that you can gently tap the pot and if you grab onto your plant with one hand and you just try and tap it lightly it will start to come off and you could tap it on different sides of the plant as well if, you, if it's still not wanting to come off but just tap it and you will get it out of your pot. Now look at the roots and look at your soil when, you, when you're going to repot. Now if you have like we have here we just have a massive root system uh, I'm not actually going to take away much here. I will take away a little bit of the soil on top here because I want to add new fresh soil. And, um, but if, if we had problems with this plant, if we have for instance root rot, the first thing you should do is that you should start to remove the infected roots. Now you will see that those roots are black and smelly. You can, you can, when you feel the roots they're not hard, they're mushy. 
all of those roots, take them away. The plant will not need them and when you're taking them away you're actually helping by removing those rotted parts. Uh, another thing is that we are going to go up a size with this plant. If you want to have it in the same size pot, I would also recommend you to remove a lot of the soil around the roots. And you can also remove some roots here. Uh, we recommend you to remove around 20% of the root system. And always go from the outside in and from the bottom up. So you remove the bottom portion here and you could remove some of the outer roots because you do not want to remove the inner roots inside that are holding on to the stem. If you cut those roots then well you don't have a root system anymore. So start by removing the bottom couple of centimeters depending on the size of your but never ever remove more than 20 maximum 30 percent of the roots like i said here we are going to go up a size of a pot here now i think i'm going up two sizes here in these pots uh, but we recommend you to never go up to a too big of a pot I could plant this in this big pot here, but by doing that, and, and, and I could think like this, well, I have a big pot, we have a lot of new nutrients, new soil, that means the roots is going to love that, they're going to start to grow even faster, it has a lot of room, the plant will be feeling well. No, it doesn't work like that, because when you plant this in that much soil or that much potting medium, whichever you use, what happens is that this, all of this is actually going to absorb more water than this pot will, of course. But it will also retain that moisture over a longer period of time because these roots will not suck up all of that water quickly. So this soil will be moist for a long period of time and that can cause a lot of problems. You can get root rot, you can get uh, a lot of other problems with your roots because uh, usually a lot most tropical plants wants to at least wants the soil to dry out a little bit. Now we have a video on how to obtain that uh, uh, using different potting mediums and so on. So we'll put a link to that as well up here. Uh, next is of course to make sure that I'm using a pot that has drainage holes. Now if you can do this please do this because Almost no plants likes to stand in water in the bottom of the pot. So you need that excess water to go access water to go out of the pot. So use drainage holes. But when we start now, we will start by adding a layer of soil in the bottom of the pot. Now, since I have drainage holes in this, I would I do not have to have some uh, something in the bottom to raise uh, raise uh, the, the, uh, the plant up in the bottom because all of the excess water is going out of the pot. So what I do is I add our soil to the bottom. I just makes, check how exactly how much I will need. Well, a couple of centimeters in the bottom. So I'll add that. Now when you've done that, just lightly press the soil a little bit, just a light touch so that it compresses a little bit. You don't want it to be too airy, but you don't want to smash it down either so that it be becomes really compact. Just lightly touch it, make sure that you have the right amount. I don't, I have too much soil in the bottom. I'll just remove some again. Check it, a little bit more, I'll remove some of this soil, I don't want the top soil here as well, I'll just take that away so that we can have new nice soil there instead. Since I am going up two sizes of the pot, I'm not going to do anything with the roots. 
What you can do with the roots here is that you could just try and loosen the roots in the bottom a little bit, like this. Just very, very slightly try and loosen them from the soil here. Because when you push this down into the new soil, you're actually helping that to start to grow into the new soil. Uh, it is hard to do this with this plant because it has that massive root system. So I'm just afraid that I'm going to injure if I do that. But if you don't have this much roots, then uh, try and just loosen it a little bit in the bottom here without hurting the roots. That will help, help it in its new home. So now I'll just put it down in the pot like this and then I'll start to add soil around the, the plant. Now when you've added the soil around the plant, or the root ball, do the same again. Just lightly press down on the edges of the pot, lightly press on the, uh, to make sure, because what can happen when you add or adding this new soil is that you can get air pockets. And those air pockets is not good for the roots, because if you get too much air for the roots, they will dry out and stop working. So to hinder that and try and, to, so if by pressing lightly, you will compact the soil a little bit and do, you won't get those air pockets. Another thing you can do is just take a small wooden stick like this. This is just a flower stick from, uh, that I've taken from an orchid. Um, and then you can use that to just press down around the root ball not injuring the root ball itself but pressing down around just to make sure that there are no root, uh, air pockets and that we get that away. Now when I've done this the soil has gone down a little bit so I'll just add a little bit more soil around the top here. Now when you add soil here, make sure that you never add too much soil. You want the soil level to be just a little bit below the edge of the pot. Because you have to consider that you're going to go in and water this plant. If you have soil all the way up, all of, a lot of that water is just going to go out of the pot and not go into the pot. So always leave a little bit of a room between the soil line and the pot line. Now that we have repotted our plant, the last step is always give it some water. Because the new soil has a different moisture to it than the old soil. And that difference can actually harm the roots. So what you need to do now is water it a little bit to make sure that the roots, the root ball and the new soil have the same moisture level. So just add some water to this, let the excess water go out, place it where you've had your plant before and just watch it thrive and watch it become bigger. So now you have a better understanding of why do we repot, when do we repot and how do we repot. And I hope you've liked this video. Please, please give it a thumbs up if you did. That really helps this channel a lot. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do. Hit the bell as well so you get a notification every time we put up something new. If you haven't already, please like us on Facebook and Instagram where you can get sneak previews on upcoming videos and sometimes just a little bit more. Now until next time, Heido!